Hello there, and welcome to Streber's Forest. My name is Wee Tim Talinky, and I've got a story to tell you that'll have you on the edge of your seat. Now, you see, Streber's Forest is a magic forest, by the way. It's said that the magic can only be broken when someone who prefers all the sorrows of this world instead of all its joys enters the forest. Then the spell will be broken. One day, a young man called Rory went to Streber's forest to cut some wood for his fire. Rory didn't know this was a magic forest and so set to work. Rory sat down to rest. The snake began to dance. Now this wasn't a real snake, but a person who'd been turned into one for being selfish and horrible to everyone it met. It saw its chance and suddenly changed Whoa. itself into the most beautiful woman that Rory had ever seen. She wore a beautiful dress with white sleeves like butterflies' wings and she had tiny feet like a countess. But because her thoughts were selfish, her tongue remained fort like a snake. My name is Samantha. And I'm looking for a husband. Would you like to marry me? Now if only Rory had raised his hatchet and shouted Get lost you bit of forest magic! Then everything would have been alright. But he was amazed that such a babe would even speak to him, let alone want to marry him. And he um, stuttered uh, that he would love to get married. That would be great. Rory didn't even notice that she still had the tongue of a snake. <laughs> Now Rory lived with his old mum, who he loved very much, and he couldn't wait to tell her he had met a beautiful wife. <gasps> but straight away, she saw that Samantha had the tongue of a snake. At this, Rory grew very angry and thought that his mum must be a witch. From that moment on, Rory hated his mum. So the three of them began living together, but not very happily. For Samantha was difficult, selfish, bad-tempered, greedy and vain. But Rory was under her spell and thought she could do no wrong. One day, Samantha gave Rory's mum an order. You see that high mountain? Climb to the top and fetch me some snow. Rory only laughed. <laughs> Rory's mum was so sad at this that she set out for the mountain, not caring whether she lived or died. The next day, Samantha gave Rory's mum another order. You see that frozen lake? Go to it and fetch me a fish for my dinner. Once again, Rory only laughed. <laughs> so Rory's mum went down to the frozen lake, not caring whether she lived or died. The ice cracked and split under her feet, so much so that she burst into tears with fear. It was so cold that the tears froze to her cheeks. She thought of asking God for help, 
but then God would know her son was bad, but God helped her anyway. High above the frozen lake, a seagull was flying home with its dinner, a fine fish it had caught in the sea. Suddenly, the fish wriggled in the gull's beak and it lost its grip. Down the fish fell to land flapping at Rory's mum's feet. Oh, you beauty! So she picked up the fish and once again returned home safely. On the third day, Rory's mum sat outside to mend one of her son's shirts. Suddenly, Samantha appeared, snatched the shirt from her and that. screamed that it was none of her business. Rory's mum was so upset that she burst into tears. She cried and cried and finally prayed to God to help her. Just at that moment, a young girl was passing and she stopped to ask what was wrong. She was a poor girl who looked cold in her thin and torn dress and she carried a large bundle of kindling sticks for her fire. Immediately, Rory's mum stopped crying and asked the girl to sit down. Why, you poor child, you are freezing. Here, let me fix your dress. So she took her needle and thread and stitched up the tears in the girl's dress. Thank you, mother. Here, take some kindling for your fire. Each thanked the other and said goodbye. That evening, Samantha had another order for Rory's mum. Look here, you old hag. I've promised the whole village that we will have baby chickens for Christmas dinner. You'd better tell me when these eggs hatch or there'll be trouble. Again, Rory only <laughs> laughed and told his mum that they were going out for dinner. When she was alone, Rory's mum used some of the poor girl's kindling to light the fire. She got a good blaze going before dozing off to sleep in her chair. Not long after that, she woke with a start and swore she could hear tiny voices singing. Her eyes nearly popped out her head when she looked at the fire. All around the hearth, tiny wee figures were dancing. Each was the size of half an elf and they all sang in high, chirpy wee voices. Run and run they danced, filling the room with laughter and fun. Rory's mum was so amazed that she forgot her troubles and started to dance as well. Soon though she grew tired and remembering her wicked daughter-in-law, Samantha, she started to cry. What ails you, mother? says I, for it was me, we Tintalinky, and my brothers, the Brownies, here to cheer her up. Rory's mum told us her story of how cruel Samantha was to her and how her son Rory was under Samantha's spell. If only Rory could see that Samantha has a tongue of a snake, then everything would be alright, she cried. I think I can help you there, says I. As sure as my name is Wee Tintalinky, I know how to help you. Just show me where you keep your hens. Rory's mum looked confused, but I told her not to worry. So she showed me where to find the hens, and that night I went off to the sunshiny land and brought back some magpie's eggs. I put these under the mother hen where they would hatch and told Rory's mum to wait and see. Every day, Rory's mum kept a close eye on the nest and reported back to Samantha that the eggs still hadn't hatched. One morning, she went to look and was delighted to see the nest was full of baby magpies. So she hurried off to tell Samantha, though she still wasn't sure how this would make Rory see sense. Well, have the eggs hatched? Yes, but... She started to reply. Then get out of my way! And with that, Samantha shoved past Rory's mum and went off to the village to boast about all her baby chickens. Later that day, Samantha returned with a crowd of nosy neighbours all wanting to see the baby chickens. Fetch in the nest, you old crone. She did as she was told and returned with the nest with the mother hen still sitting on it. All the neighbours crowded round as Samantha lifted the hen off the nest. Imagine her surprise when instead of baby chickens, out popped baby magpies who scampered about and cried for food. Samantha couldn't resist the sight of so many delicious wee magpies and out popped her tongue for the whole world to see. All the nosy neighbours saw that she was really just a snake for the forest and ran for the room screaming. When Rory saw what was happening, he shook with anger. His old mum came up to him and said, Oh, take her back to the forest, son. 
You can see for yourself exactly what you have married. But Rory screamed. You old witch! Where did you find magpie's eggs at this time of year? We've had enough of you and your schemes. Now pack your bags and get out. Rory's mum couldn't believe her ears and begged her son to change his mind. But he was like a man possessed. That night, Rory's mum left her home forever, not knowing where she would go or what she would do. After she'd gone, Samantha told Rory that they should follow his mum and watch her die for the cold. Rory did as he was told, but he was secretly beginning to regret throwing his mum out. So the two of them followed on for a distance, watching to see what would happen. It was so cold that Rory's mum thought she would freeze to death. To try and stay warm, she used the last of the poor girl's kindling to light a fire. No sooner had the flames caught than out jumped the brownies. Oh wee Tintalinky, your plan has failed and my son has thrown me out to die. Don't worry mother, we'll look after you and see you alright, I said. Come away with us and see your master, Strebor. He always knows what to do. And with that, I gave my loudest whistle and out of the night came running a huge stag and a squad of squirrels. We helped Rory's mum up onto the stag's back and then me and my brothers each jumped on a squirrel. Off we raced over the snow faster and faster into the night. Samantha and Rory couldn't believe what they were seeing and struggled on falling further and further behind. Hurry up, she's getting away! On we rode through the night until at last we came to Streber's forest. Without slowing down, we plunged into the trees and our way was lit by the squirrel's eyes. Eventually, we came to a glade with a huge ancient oak tree that marks the entrance to Streber's home. In we went through a gap in the rocks and found ourselves in an underground passage. Now Streber is master of this magic forest and his home is huge. On our way down to see him, we passed golden castles and a village all fenced in silver. At last, we stood before his throne. Why have you come before me? Meantime, Samantha and Rory had struggled through the forest to reach the glade. They sneaked up to the entrance in the rocks and pressed their ears to hear what was going on inside. Great Strabor, please help this woman whose son has married a snake and whose life has been destroyed. Then woman, tell me your tale. Trembling before the throne, Rory's mum told all that had happened to her and her son. How wicked Samantha was and how stupid her son had been and how she had been cast out to die. That is a sad tale, but fear nothing, for I will help you. You see that village, all fenced with silver? Well, all you need do is walk through the gate and you will return to your home and your youth. Rory's mum looked again at the village and began to realise it was the one she'd grown up in. She gasped with joy to see her village again after all these years and ran to the gate. You mean that I can live my life all over again? Yes, you can return to your youth. I never grow old but live forever in happiness in your village. Oh, but what will become of my son? Ha! What son? You will be young again and know nothing of any son. At this, Rory's mum turned away from the gate and said to Streber, My lord, I thank you for your kindness to me, but I cannot forget my son. I would rather live in misery, knowing that I had him, than live forever with all the joy in the world. No sooner had she said this than Streber disappeared and she found herself outside again. Samantha gave a great scream and before their eyes turned into a snake again. The magic spell was broken. Rory fell on his knees and begged his mum to forgive him, which she did straight away. He lifted her up and carried her back through the forest and across the snowy wastes to their little cottage. So that's how Streber's Forest lost its magic. When someone entered, he preferred all their sadness to all their joy. Later on, I heard that Rory married the poor girl who had brought the kindling sticks, and all three of them lived happily together. And me, Every once in a while, me and my brothers the brownies visit Rory, his mum and his new wife and they sing and dance into the night. <laughs> <laughs>